Hey y'all, welcome to this video. So uh, I'm Kaylin May and today we are going to do a book tag. And this is a tag video. This is a tag that I actually came up with last night, <laughs> like one in the morning, after watching the film, The Social Dilemma on Netflix. So for those of you who haven't kind of seen this craze, the Social Dilemma is a documentary or a docudrama really. Uh, I think it's a Netflix original, so it's only on Netflix that came out in the past couple weeks or so that has sort of taken the world by storm, or at least the US by storm. I'm US centric enough that I actually don't know if it's taken the world by storm. It's a little dramatic and there's some really good things about it and it brings up some really interesting points. It certainly opened up the conversation about big tech in our lives. But there are some things I didn't love about it. Uh, the lack of the lack of any acknowledgement of any of the like digital activists who have come before those that were in the film, uh, the lack of diversity. And also it was very fear mongery. There's a lot of like, save the children, which, you know, I feel, <laughs> but also I think the way that they did it was very one-sided and heavy handed. So I recommend, I mean, like watch it. It's fun. I mean, it's not fun. It's awful, but like, it scratches the itch for like sensationalized documentary if you want that. Uh, I think it brings up some really good things. It's just like very one-sided and has some issues. So, you know, take everything with a little bit of a grain of salt. I also, um, in my description box, have listed not only the name of the documentary and where you can find it, also a couple of resources. It's called the Digital Detox Kit that actually takes you step by step on how to improve your privacy settings and kind of take control of your data and then set things up so that you have a little bit more control of your data. Uh, a solutions oriented approach that the film itself didn't actually lay out. And then thirdly, I included an article uh, from Slate Magazine or Slate Online that uh, is a little bit of a, not an opposing viewpoint, but just uh, a criticism of the film that I think encapsulates some of the some of the issues in it because uh, I wanted to make sure that this is balanced. Okay, now my dog is heading out. Um, so these are 10, there are 10 prompts. So I watched this film and then freaked out last night and um, was just like, for some reason it triggered these creative juices and I kept thinking of like different issues or different subjects it broached and then relevant or related things that I could talk about and that I wanted to like read about and wanted to do. So yeah, so these are, these are these. Okay, to the video. So here are, here's the tag. I don't know how to do this. I've never done a tag before. So the book I'd like to recommend for this is Crime and Punishment by Dostoyevsky. Crime and Punishment by Dostoyevsky. Dostoevsky. Crime and Punishment by Dostoevsky. Crime and Punishment by Dostoevsky. So this is a book I read, oh God, my freshman year of college or my senior year of high school or the summer between. And I remember I read it like mostly by the side of this pool and between all of the Russian names and sort of the length and the density, it was a, a hard one to get through. And I read it because my boyfriend at the time, it was his favorite book. Um, and I don't think I would have read it without that recommendation. And I'm glad I did. I'm not sure I would read it again, but I'm glad I read it. So for example, if I spend four hours and 35 minutes a day on my phone, which is what it told me, I would find a book with fewer than 435 pages. So that's what it says. I spend an average of four hours and 35 minutes on my phone. I'd really like to like have that. Um, so I am recommending Everything I Never Told You by Celeste Ng, and that book has 292 pages. It follows a, or it starts off with the fact that this daughter has died and you don't really completely understand the reasons for the death or the like, the circumstances of the death and um, they become they you there there is more clarity on that as you go on but it's really about a family it's about an interracial family living in ohio i love celeste ing's writing and i really thought that like what she does well she did really well in this book so highly recommend okay third prompt So that is one of the like fatal flaws of this film is that while it did have a sprinkling 
of um, women of color, like maybe two. Uh, the majority of people who were interviewed and like the majority of screen time was taken up by like five white dudes. So the book I'm going to recommend is The Death of Vivek Oji by Akweki Emeze. And I read this recently and I absolutely loved it. It's another book about uh, that starts off with like the death of a child or I mean, I guess at this point you're a young adult. Um, it's funny that actually I didn't realize I had paired those back to back. Another beautiful story about family dynamics and really well written, also very interesting um, commentary on sex sexuality and gender. Um, I loved it. I loved that book, so I'd highly recommend it. Okay, next prompt. So the book I'm going to recommend is a YA novel, everyone probably has heard of it, called Looking for Alaska by John Green. This was one of my favorite books when I was younger, and I think that it talks a lot about mental health, mental illness, and um, puzzling out somebody's motivations when really those motivations are coming from a mental illness perspective. So the book I'm going to recommend for this is Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. Delia Owens by Delia Owens. And uh, one of my favorite things about this book was the completely lush descriptions of the northern North Carolina coastline. Absolutely beautiful. I felt like I was immersed in that and escaping into it and I loved it. So that's what I would recommend for that. So if you've watched any of my other videos, you know I loved this book I read um, at the beginning of like March or April called um, How to Kill a City by Peter Moskowitz. And it is a book about gentrification and it takes four different cities, San Francisco, New York City, New Orleans, and Detroit. And it sort of does little case studies of each of them and about how gentrification has moved through them and where they are on the stages of gentrification, what the human impact of that bit has been and maybe how we can not gentrify everything um, and what the cost of gentrification is. I loved it, it was so good. If you live in a city, 10 out of 10. So I sort of want for like a very literal interpretation of this, which uh, the book I'm going to recommend is Catch Me If You Can, The True Story of a Real Fake by Frank Abagnale. And this is a con man book. It was also made into a film early 2000s, mid 2000s, like 2010, 2007. Who knows? That stars Leo DiCaprio that I watched as a guilty pleasure a lot in high school. So it must have been like mid 2000s. And I was just, I went through like a con man phase and that was one of my favorite books about that. But if you are recommending books, it doesn't have to be quite so literal. Okay. So the book I'm going to recommend was given to me by my friend Alisa and it is called Children of the Land by Marcelo Hernandez Castillo. Uh, and it is a beautiful memoir of his life, of um, what it is like to be an undocumented immigrant in the United States, what it means to immigrate, what it means to live by the border, what it means to have family in two countries and to feel like you are of two places. It is beautifully written. This man is a poet and um, you can just see that through his lyrical, gorgeous writing. I really enjoyed it and I would highly recommend it. So got that book from a friend. Thanks, Alisa. whether that be from the library, an advanced review copy, borrowing from a friend, uh, etc. Maybe you found it on a tiny library, like a free little library in your neighborhood, perfect. The book that I'm gonna recommend for that is How to Walk on Water by Rachel Swearington. So shout out to NetGalley and I don't can't think of the name of the publisher, but I'll put it here um, for sending me this collection of short stories. It's super great for spooky season. I think it's either has just come out or it's going to come out in October. And it's a series of sort of like unsettling noir 
esque um, short stories. And some of them like go the way that you want them to go. Some of them go a completely different way, but ultimately they're great. I really enjoyed them. Okay, uh, the last one, last one guys. So we're gonna throw back to a classic. Um, one of my favorite John Steinbeck books is Cannery Row. I read it in high school and I have loved it ever since. And it takes place in Monterey, uh, which is in California. It's actually in Northern California, sort of near Silicon Valley. John Steinbeck is a California author, like one of probably the most, one of the most famous California authors. The three people I'm gonna tag to do this video next are Lena Norms, who knows if you'll even see this, but if you do, I would love to hear what books you come up with. Tammy Tries to Read, I've been loving the videos you've been putting out, girl, and The Melodramatic Bookworm. Um, so the three of you, I have tagged you, go forth, tag other people, watch this documentary. If you have, if you haven't, and also if you haven't been tagged by me, consider this your tag. If you watch this and you wanna do this, I've tagged you officially. As I mentioned in the description box, I have some resources, I've got some articles. I hope you all are so well, are so safe. This is the last video I'll ever make on this couch because we are selling it and I will see you next time. If you're new here, feel free to subscribe, join me. My videos will be intermittent for a while and I think eventually I'll settle back down into a rhythm. And if you're an old friend, thanks for coming by. Also, side note about this dress. Okay guys, so this is a vintage 90s dress. Do you see these like, is this cottage core first off? And second off, these cute little cherries and bow ties. So. Jonathan and I were driving today, my boyfriend, and I made him pull over on the side of the road so that I could, like this dress was on a mannequin and I saw it driving by and I made him pull over so I could go buy it. And I literally walked into the shop and I made them pull it off the mannequin outside and I tried it on and it fit and I bought it and it was like the most glorious moment of synchronicity in my life. And I love it. It makes me feel so cute and I'm gonna wear it every day. So try and stop me. Okay, bye guys, love you. Talk to you next time.